all right in this video I'll show you a few shell script which mm, I have written for my to resolve my problem and also borrowed of the idea and the script from some few people and molded it to in my way to get it work for me essentially it's I'm trying to solve my own problem not everyone else out there in the world so take these things with a pinch of salt okay it might work for you it might not work for you okay so here I go the first one is as you can see I have already tried that so there is a script <coughs> this script basically is a very ordinary and probably written in a very very what I say with lack of imagination and and lack of uh, knowledge or lack of smartness but one fine day I was stuck so I wrote it and from from that day onwards it, it stays there I, I modified it here and there whenever I required and push it to the github admin script repo for for certain sort of backup things or something like that the first line it's just a this script is also up there in the github but the, the function of this script mm, this script was written by somebody else and I stole it from there and then I started to use it this script is basically as the name suggests color.sh it provides you all the colors on the on, on the on the terminal with a, with a, with a, with this with a, with the mnemonics okay so if you can see go down the script and if you clearly notice right these are the variable which shows which color it is these things all coming from that script this color dot sh okay it's a fancy stuff you can outright ignore it if you wanted to so this is the one uh, because I missed missed the point so I wrote this sky escape sequence mm, after looking through the talk to to break out from the color formation done by the by the variable okay so uh, if you go to the <coughs> bottom of the end of the line see there is a no color it is very essential to break down otherwise the color will continue and mingle up and which will not output the way you want it to to get the output okay means you need to get back to the normal color color text in on terminal as simple as that okay then these are the just find out the right binary in a POSIX compliant way okay uh, yesteryear we used to use which and command is a POSIX compliant way of uh, finding stuff this is basically changing this script is basically syntactic sugar or wrapper on a ch root function ch root means change root it's a age-old technology and uh, people use it leaps and bounds on at least in yesteryear we used to use and still i still use for various reasons although there are modern variant and popular variant are available which should be you should check it out but this one is for the old time set okay so this is again uh, this binary i don't think by default present on a, on a distribution which is driven by system d all you need to but it used to if i remember correctly anyway the structure might have change and I haven't looked at it properly all I some it has come with a different package system the container or something like that if system the NS spawn 
uh, it shows you the same thing in like what chroot does in continuous manner much smoother way so you need to get this binary in your system by your package manager i don't know which distribution you are running and what package manager you are running but get this damn thing otherwise it the script might not work on system driven stuff which is a shame okay so then there is a there is a there is a prompt once you get into the ch root environment it's a good practice to mark that mark that zone that you are in a ch root root environment with this prompt with ch root prepended so your eye is a visual indication which is important if you are working with multiple terminals and all the stuff next uh, uh, i next uh, there is a variable i declare sys in it basically is trying to figure it out wh what is the init system this script is running for that we use the string binary to extract out the text from the init init file then use the awk to to parsing out out what is the subsystem in its system then then find out the start and length and exit it out okay then i checked it for the for this script should be run as a super user if it is not it will exit then this is a help function very ordinary if you haven't met up some sort of expectation this script has it will it will it will exit out with a with a with a message explicitly what you need to pass there is no huffing and puffing and any other stuff so then it will prompt for the partition a uh, slice is a old term but still usable uh, you can replace this as a part or whatever the way you described your hard disk partition or mm, ssd partition whatever it is is prompting for that where your other os is, is residing and then it will prompt you for the for the directory where you explicitly want to mount that particular os if any of them is found out having zero value it it will exit with a usage message simple and if it is fine that it is running systemd it will go ahead and mount that particular slice onto the onto the mentioned slice onto the ch root dir then then invoke the systemd and spawn with hyphen b and d b stands for boot and ch root directory so you can get a get a get a clear cut view what is going on the terminal it will it will it will show you the booting process okay so just like the bare metal one and next thing is the, if it is find it is a sysv in its system is running it will go ahead and do all the traditional stuff people have been doing for ages to get into the c root there are many other way but this is the simplest possible way to get everything inside ch root for the basic purpose if you wanted to do much more complicated stuff you need to put more stuff inside the ch root environment the last one is just to copy the this is a this is where your name suffer relies in this file uh, by default the ch root environment might not able to access the the internet or something that's why you, we are copying it in the ch root directory where it should belong to then once you are get into that environment it will explicitly tell you what you need this is for your own sake to set the prompt like this once you are done then you are get into the get, get into that particular situated environment and if nothing above works it will simply provide you the 
usage message how you should use this script and how you should manipulate it to work like that way okay so once you get into the successfully get into the search suite environment and you have done your and you wanted to go out of it simply type exit and it will lazily unmount all the mounted directory what I've been shown here okay so it will lazily un unmount all those directory and bring bring back your system in a in a pristine condition what it was before CH2 pretty ordinary pretty simple uh, this script again I'm saying could be written in Jillian's way in a much 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 better way probably people who are expertise have got the expertise and knack to, to, to do something more artistic better way this is my version it it's ugly and it is ugly but it, it used for me as I said in the very very beginning I wrote this for Martinus many years ago from to solve my problem I was not thinking about whoever is using and whatever is using and what is that there is a scope if you want to you can you can improve the lips and bound and let me know that where I'm lacking behind I know it, it it has you could make the checking much more stringent to 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 stop it from failing there are several way uh, it, it could go wrong and it, it might fail so you can you can stop that by doing a lot of other stringent checking too so for instance uh, let me give you a demonstration how these things will go let me bring up a um if i run i i as i said it has to be run as a sudo because it is going to touch the root file system my scripts names are as explicit as possible and looking at it uh, i i know what the script supposed to do because giving an intelligent name <laughs> or some some other stuff uh, i don't want to waste my time figuring out by looking at the name oh i need to get into it. sometime you just look at the name of your script and written such a descriptive manner looking at it you understood okay this 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 fellow will going to do these things simple done and dusted with matter ends there was a point of wasting time to figuring out and all this stuff naming is a hard thing but we need to do that and we have been bugged in the in the, in the industry with a misnaming or misnomer for for ages okay anyway so look, if I run it it lasts me for the supervisor password or super root user password here is the thing I know my system so I I generate a file which has got this entry you could easily generate a dynamic entry if you run across over the network to get the stuff as I say I'm <laughs> repeating it's become a cliche I wrote this form to solve my problem in my mind maybe maybe I, I was not so much farsighted so I narrowed down to it so anyway it's a flat file it's a it's a, it's a predefined static file I know where things are in my machine so I used it like that you can you can dynamically change that it's pretty ordinary pretty easy okay so if I say if I want to mount STF4 that's on that is slack bar okay now it is uh, giving you the root directory why do you want to mount it okay I'm basically trying to spoon feed myself instead of scratching my head and hovering and thinking uh, um, generally standard places is or media or 
if you create something very specific on a network environment where do you want to mount it something like that I'm going with like this see it's getting there right I'm inside I'm inside the inside all I have to do done and um, uh, there is a st still see you noticed it right it still changed the host name you could do that also you could easily change that the name where you are getting into the CHO2 environment so there is a there is a catch you need to fix it out I haven't bothered to but I should have I, I'll do that sometime but that's why okay I'm on I'm on slack war okay so if I do user bean cat it is seen see I'm inside on slack war or like the, the the process is smooth and not so daunting okay so it has detected that um, I'm running it okay and that's why it's mounting the this stuff okay once you are done as I said you just have to press just have to type this exit see it it all and un it unmounted all the stuff here if you do a TFH it's done there is nothing left on it right so so it is it is super easy to way to do things and um, yes I, I might do more videos on the on the rudimentary stuff I have done over the years a uh, few of them not exposed to the internet but I'm planning to uh, people might find it useful and that's all for this for this video I, I hope it will it will give you some sort of insight thanks for watching